Good evening, everyone. My name is Gail Walker. My, my name is Frank Velgara. And together, we will be your moderators this evening. We're delighted to welcome for the first time to the United States, His Excellency, Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel. Welcome, Mr. President, and the official Cuban delegation that is here to attend the 73rd General Assembly of the United Nations to defend the voice of the Cuban people. We want to thank the Healing Drum Collective for welcoming us for welcoming us into this space with the majestic call of the drum. Thank you, sisters. Distinguished ministers, representative of the United Nations Diplomatic Corps, and the ministers of various countries who are here with us today, those in attendance, who are representing our congressional leaders, local elected officials, representatives of faith-based communities, and dear friends and supporters of the Cuba Solidarity Movement, we welcome you all to this historic gathering entitled, Cuba Speaks for Itself. Welcome. Now we have a wonderful program planned for this evening. Obviously the main event, of course, is focused on hearing the address from President Canel, Diaz Canel. And we ask now for you to please silence your phones and to refrain from moving from your seats. Among our special guests, this evening, we want to recognize the following. One of Cuba's greatest friends and someone who worked so hard to end the unjust blockade against Cuba while serving in the U.S. Congress, the Honorable Charles Rangel. We also would love to recognize those who the Cuban Council of State has awarded the Friendship Medal. That medal is in recognition of the hard work that the following people have done in solidarity with the people of Cuba. El Señor Arnaldo Barrón, a historic figure in the Cuban-American community that has supported the revolution from day on. We also have with us a dear, dear sister and comrade who we've known for many years, not only in Cuba solidarity, but in many of the anti-war, and progressive movements in this country, La Compañera Leslie Kagan. Okay. And of course, a lot of us know some of our seasoned activists and really key people in our solidarity movement with the people of Cuba and the Cuban Revolution. 
And with us tonight is compañera Gloria La Riva. No, I haven't seen her, okay. This next special guest is really, is really someone that not only has been recognized by Cuba and the Solidarity Movement, but which is an example of how historically the African American community in New York has stood with Cuba. Rosemary Mealy. And also among our friends with, he, with us here tonight, we'd also like to recognize Michael Krinsky, Peggy Gilpin, our brother and friend, Father Luis Barrio of IFCO Pastors for Peace. I'm getting to him. One of the hardest things in the empire has been within the Cuban-American community to develop and maintain that solidarity with the Cuban people. And many of us have known them for so many years. I don't want to give away my age, but we're talking about the current president of Casa de las Americas, Jaime Mendieta. Where are you, Jaime? Stand up, please. We are honored by all the work CASA has done. And our friends extend to the trade union and labor movement. Many of you may not know that there have been key labor organizations who has always stood by Cuba's side. And representing those this evening, we have our compañera and friend, Estela Vasquez, Executive Vice President of 1199, SEIU. I love you, Estela. I would like to say finally we recognize, um, but we also know that since the revolution started in 59, during that first and second year, there were huge amounts of people from the United States going to Cuba, risking arrest. And that tradition continues. And that tradition is recognized with the presence of the Venceremos Brigade. <laughs> Venceremos Brigade. They have carried out 50 years of solidarity with the Cuban Revolution. And guess what? The 50th anniversary is next year, and we have to make it the biggest brigade yet. Thank you. All right. So we're honored this evening to hold this historic event here in the beautiful Riverside Church. Give Riverside a hand. This majestic environment is where many notable individuals have spoken over the years, including Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Reverend Jesse Jackson, UN General, Secretary General Kofi Annan, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Cesar Chavez, Arundhati Roy, Nelson Mandela, And of course, our beloved Commandante Fidel Castro Ruiz. It is our 
our distinct pleasure to introduce the Reverend Michael Livingston, the Senior Executive Minister of the Riverside Church, to give us words of welcome. And immediately following Reverend Livingston, we will hear a selection from the gospel-inspired Riverside Church praise team. Ministers, ambassadors, distinguished guests from the United Nations, national and local members of government, faith leaders and dear friends of the Cuba Solidarity Movement, I bring words of welcome from the Riverside Church in the city of New York. It is my honor to welcome His Excellency President Miguel Diaz Canel to the United States and to the Riverside Church. Over its nearly 90-year history, the Riverside Church has welcomed, as you've just heard, many world leaders, including, let's say it again, the late Fidel Castro Ruiz in the year 2000. In that tradition, we now welcome President Diaz Canel. I had the honor of knowing the late Reverend Lucius Walker, the the founding director of IFCO, Pastors for Peace, and I'm very familiar with his ministry and support of the Cuban people. We will always remember his years of work organizing friendship caravans to Cuba to protest the U.S. government's policy of isolation of Cuba and as an example of true Christian love. Once again, I extend a warm welcome to President Diaz Canel and the Cuban delegation. I wish you a spirit-filled, productive visit to our city and to our country. And may your visit here be a sign that very soon people will be able to travel absolutely freely between our two countries. Yes, yes. building and deepening bonds of friendship, continuing in the struggle together, and sharing our rich cultural heritage. Welcome to you all. Now many of you were here in the year 2000, 18 years ago this month, in this very sanctuary, when El Comandante Fidel Castro announced the start of Cuba's medical school scholarship program. But first, we're going to, before we're talking about that, we're going to hear a selection from the Riverside Church Praise Team. Welcome them. The song is about freedom. And the simple words you have to say after this is just ha, le, lu, ya, ha, le, lu, yeah, and then the rhythm's gonna go like this. We are God's chosen generation. We will fight and we will win. We are God's chosen generation. We will fight and we will win. Come on. 
on and say, we are God's chosen generation. generation. We will fight. We will fight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, the praise team. Once again, let's give them a hand, the Riverside Church Praise Team. Thank you, thank you. Before we head on any further, we're gonna take a moment and ask our sisters, the Healing Drum Collective, to offer libations. We thank our mother, father, creator, for giving us the breath of life today, and we say Ashe. We thank our Mother, Father, Creator for giving us the basic essentials that sustain our lives, air, fire, earth, water, and we say Ashe. We thank our ancestors, those great kings and queens of ancient Kemet. They gave us science, mathematics, religion, architecture, which all civilizations were built. They go by many names, Imhotep, Ramses, Akhenaten, Queen Tai, and Queen Nefertiri, we say Ashe. We call on those bones that line the Atlantic Ocean, and we say Ashe. We thank our warriors and revolutionaries who fought for our freedom in Haiti, in Cuba, in Brazil, in the motherlands, and we say Ashe. As we gather here today to celebrate and welcome the new president, the new Cuban president, Miguel Diaz Canal Bermudez. He stands on the legacy of Fidel and Raul Castro. We ask for your protection as he forges a path 
seeking the com combination and balance between the traditional of the past and seeking a new future for our young people and we say Ashe. May we be the ones to fill the shoes of our ancestors calling for reparations and we say Ashe. May love be our foundation and our pillar of strength. May you be the one to bring hope. May you be the one to bring love. Most of all, may you be the one to call for revolution. So let it be written, so let it be done. Ashe Obara, Ashe Obara, Ashe Obara. You may be seated. I'd like to just share some words from the welcoming committee to uh, President Diaz-Canel and to the, the delegation. This is an abbreviated version of what you will find in the journals that will be distributed before the evening is over. Following the 58-year history of solidarity between the people of Harlem and the people of Cuba, on this very special occasion, the welcoming committee gives a warm welcome and embrace of solidarity to President Miguel Diaz-Canel and the entire Cuban delegation who are here attending, alongside many dozens of other heads of states and governments, the annual opening of the United Nations General Assembly this fall. At the UN, President Diaz-Canel presented Cuba's point of view on burning issues of world politics, and we look forward to hearing his address tonight. Tonight is a unique opportunity to hear firsthand from the President on the challenges being faced by a new generation of Cuban revolutionaries, working people, and youth. Today, the Cuban people as a whole, following the election of a new National Assembly and Council of State, are engaging in a mass participatory process of debate and discussion to prepare and ratify a new constitution registering important economic, social, and political changes in Cuba. Our welcoming committee brings together dozens of organizations in New York and New Jersey area that have worked diligently with the spirit of unity and solidarity over many years, indeed many decades, to bring an end to Washington's criminal blockade of Cuba and its unremitting bipartisan attempts to defeat and eradicate the example of the Cuban Revolution. The truth is that there have always been defenders and supporters of revolutionary Cuba inside the United States. Opposition to economic and travel sanctions represent a clear and growing majority. And tonight we are joined here at the historic Riverside Church by solidarity activists and friends of Cuba from across the United States. We have been through many struggles together from the fight to return Elian Gonzalez to his father and to his country to the struggle to free the Cuban Five. There have been other solidarity efforts. We've mentioned the Vince Ramos Brigade. We've mentioned Pastors for Peace. There have been numbers of different programs that um, uh, we've been engaged in over these many years. We've fought apartheid South Africa together and we will forever, we will never forget the decisive part of the revolutionary Cuba under Fidel's internationalist leadership in defending the independence of Angola. <laughs> winning the independence of Namibia and in <laughs> and in unraveling and defeating the apartheid state. Dear friends, for these and many, many other reasons, our bonds of solidarity are unbreakable. 
We stand with Cuba not only because we defend its sovereignty and right to self-determination as a matter of principle, we are also inspired by its living example of international solidarity for working people of every nationality, its example for every woman, man, child, every person fighting for a better world in today's capitalist world disorder. We welcome you, President Diaz-Canel. We welcome the Cuban delegation, and we look forward to hearing your inspiring words tonight. Thank you. We welcome <laughs> President Nicolas Maduro. <laughs> President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Maduro seguro. Al imperio dale duro. Maduro seguro. They should both come up and hold fists, you know. Yeah. Because people want to see them. Chavez, you heard the people, man. This is amazing. This is very. Chavez vive, la lucha sigue. Chavez vive, la lucha sigue. La lucha sigue. This is wonderful. <laughs> Welcome. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. President Nicolas Maduro, President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. This is a great honor indeed, a great honor. There are several ways in which Cuba has really extended its solidarity historically, and ELAM, the Latin America School of Medicine, is just one of those shining examples. Many of you were in this church 18 years ago this month when Fidel Castro announced the start of Cuba's medical school scholarship program. Many of you were here when he announced that evening that Cuba would offer full scholarships to young people with limited means to study medicine at the Latin America School of Medicine, also known as ELAM. The only stipulation being that the graduates of the program would return to the United States to practice in underserved communities. Tonight, Mr. President, I am pleased to tell you that we have 179 U.S. graduates of ELAM. And now, and now I'd like to ask the ELAM graduates that are here this evening to please rise. These are just some of the wonderful, beautiful U.S. graduates. And now we'd like to ask two of those graduates, Dr. Sitin Billy Sales of the class of 2010 and Dr. Joaquin Morante, the graduate of 2012. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. C. Tembile Sales, and I work as an internist here at a local health clinic that serves the 32 BJ Buildings and Janitorials Union.
My name is Joaquin Morante. I'm a pulmonary critical care physician at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx. <laughs> We represent the 175 U.S. medical doctors who have graduated from Cuba's Latin American School of Medicine and the... <laughs> and the 75 medical students studying in the country on free and unencumbered scholarships. We are honored to welcome Presidente Díaz-Canel and members of the Cuban delegation to the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. Please extend our profound gratitude to El Pueblo Cubano for their unwavering support and sacrifice. It is through their generosity that our bonds of cooperation can forge a better world. It is through them that we know that a more just, respectful, and caring world is possible. The profound act of internationalism has provided a model of medical training and caring which demonstrates how medical education can result in social transformation, which we are using in our struggle here in the United States to fight against medical apartheid, sickness, and impoverishment. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Okay. Oh, no, Since its first graduating class in 2005, the Latin American School of Medicine has graduated over 28,500 physicians from over 103 countries. That's just amazing. We were provided with the scientific tools to go out into the world, endowed with the skills to integrate the concepts of prevention, social determinants of health, and active community partnering and participation. We are a part of the global community, where since its inception in 1999, graduates of ELAM have been a beacon for our communities, not only locally, but in the diaspora following the example of so many of our Cuban professors and colleagues. Abroad, we have aided in the direct aftermath of the 2010 earthquake which devastated Haiti. Most recently, U.S. Alam graduates provided relief work in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. And even more locally, we provided relief work in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy right here in New York City. But it's at home where we have truly begun to see the possibilities and results of educating and forming medical professionals of consciousness. As a small example, graduates of ELAM are working to improve birthing outcomes for at-risk mothers, expand health care for the homeless, and develop and improve primary care services to transgender or gender non-conforming communities. Our opportunity to study in Cuba is a concrete reflection of the solidarity of the people of Cuba with growing segments and sectors of the United States population. This solidarity has historical roots in the support the black abolitionists Frederick Douglass and Henry Highland Garnett extended to the struggle against slavery and colonialism in Cuba in the 1870s. It was strengthened. It was strengthened by the bond between Fidel Castro and Malcolm X forged at Harlem's Teresa Hotel in 1960. Go get it. Go get it. More than anything else, more than anything else, the Cuban medical program reflects the personal friendship and mutual cooperation of Comandante 
Fidel Castro, and IFCO's founder, Reverend Lucius Walker. Physically, physically they are no longer with us, but their dream of friendship and solidarity between the, between the peoples of Cuba and the United States is a reality that we are proud to manifest as members of that growing cadre of committed doctors and medical students who were and are the U.S. delegation at Elam. We are a group who are not content to just integrate into a medical system which for too long has either neglected or betrayed the trust of the most vulnerable populations in the U.S. We are a group of physicians who absolutely believe we can have transformative impact on the U.S. medical system. Seguiremos el ejemplo del pueblo cubano. Seguiremos en el camino de ser médico revolucionario. Gracias por esta oportunidad. Gracias. Y gracias por estar con nosotros. Gracias. Have a good night. Good night. I'm a bit emotional uh, for two reasons. One is that the sister who just spoke to you from the medical school is the daughter of Bill Sales, a longtime African-American activist. And if I may use this term, Joaquin, my godson is a Puerto Rican red diaper baby. I wanted to say, that among the countries that Cuba has always been there for has been Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico y Cuba. Mi patria. Que viva. My people, we're well represented here tonight because we know the debt that we owe Cuba as a people. Now, sisters and brothers, I have the honor of helping you welcome a warrior in the tradition of Chavez and other world leaders, Nicolás Maduro. <laughs> Compañero Maduro, suba, suba, suba. Que viva, queridos hermanos, queridas hermanas. Dear brothers and sisters, les traigo Un saludo desde el corazón del noble pueblo revolucionario de Venezuela. I bring greetings. I bring greetings from the heart of the noble and revolutionary Venezuelan people. Hoy llegamos en la tarde a Nueva York. We arrived this afternoon, New York. Yo tomé la decisión de venir a última hora ayer. I made a last minute decision to come here to New York today. Tenía muchas ganas de venir por dos razones. I really wanted to come here uh, for two main reasons. Primero, traer la verdad del pueblo de Venezuela para exponerla ante Naciones Unidas. To come here to bring the truth of Venezuela and to expose it to the US people. Y en segundo lugar, tenía muchas ganas de venir para 
volver a asistir a esta Catedral Histórica de Harlem y tener este encuentro junto a ustedes para ratificar nuestro amor y compromiso. And the second main reason was because I wanted to come back here to this very important cathedral in Harlem to bring my love and solidarity to all of you. Y compartir con nuestro hermano presidente de Cuba, Miguel Díaz Canel, y el pueblo de Cuba. And to share with my dear brother, the president of Cuba, Miguel Díaz Canel, and the, people, the Cuban people in all. Son muchas cosas las que quisiera decirle. I would like to say so many things tonight. Pero todas las voy a resumir en la siguiente frase. However, I'm going to summarize it in the following sentences. Hemos sido víctimas de una gran agresión imperialista. We have been the victim of the anonymous imperialist aggression. Pero hoy puedo decirlo, 26 de septiembre del 2018. However, today, on September the 26th, 2018, la revolución bolivariana de Venezuela está de pie, está viva y está victoriosa. The Bolivarian Revolution is standing, is, is alive and is victorious. Gracias por la solidaridad, la comprensión y el amor de ustedes. Hasta la victoria siempre, Nueva York. Sisters and brothers, compañeras y compañeros, we know that art and culture are critical to the nourishment of the human spirit. The power of the arts flourishes, and it is present in the lives of every Cuban man, women, and woman and child as a testament to one's national identity as an artist. Music is in, inextricably connected to the Cuban identity. It is in that spirit and recognizing that for the people's struggle, culture is nourishment and it's a weapon to educate our people. I would like to introduce to you de Ramir González, who is going to share with us a musical interlude. Welcome, Daya Ramir.
Dave Ramir Gonzalez. It is an honor to present to you our special guest. His Excellency, President Miguel Diaz-Canel. <laughs> Mr. President. Good night, friends, Cuba and Venezuela in New York. Huh? <laughs> Mr. President, we want to just ask some of our young friends here to come forward with a small gift for you and your wife. Thank you. Gracias. The president is a leader who grew up during the revolution, born in Via Clara where he was rooted in community and thus emerged as one of the youngest leaders of the Young Communist League, later becoming the first secretary of the Communist Party in his province. From there, he took on the same responsibilities in Olguin, one of the largest provinces in Cuba. He was always connected to Cuban youth and recognizing their dreams and aspirations. President Diaz-Canel was then appointed as Minister of Higher Education later was elected as first vice president of the Council of State, and last April, our illustrious guest and leader was elected president of the Republic of Cuba. Tonight, we recognize in our guests the deep solidarity between the people of Cuba and the people of the United States. Welcome, President Miguel Diaz-Canel. Thank you. Todos los cubanos que han pasado por esta catedral siempre dicen lo mismo. Aquí ocurren cosas maravillosas. Every Cuban that has ever set foot on this cathedral say the same thing. Wonderful things happen here. Y hoy después de un intenso y duro día estamos viviendo emociones con ustedes aquí en Riverside Church. And after a long and intense day of work. Today we are living very heartfelt emotions with you here at Riverside Church. Hoy en Naciones Unidas, dos pueblos hermanos levantaron su voz. Today at the United Nations, the peoples, the brothers people raised their voice. Venezuela denunció toda la agresión a la cual ha sido sometida. Venezuela rejected all of the aggression to which our, that uh, country has been subjected to. Y también ratificó su decisión de continuar la revolución bolivariana. And it also ratified its decision to continue the Bolivarian revolution. Como un fiel legado al comandante Chávez. As a genuine legacy to Commander Chávez. Y Cuba también alzó su voz junto a Venezuela. Today, Cuba also spoke out together with Venezuela. Para apoyar a Venezuela. In support of Venezuela. Para apoyar a Nicaragua. In support of Nicaragua. Para apoyar a Puerto Rico. In support of Puerto Rico. Para apoyar a América Latina. And to support the whole of Latin America. Para apoyar al pueblo palestino y al pueblo saharaui. Also in support. Y para apoyar todas las causas justas del mundo. In support of the Palestinian people and the Saharan people. Y and también of all of the just causes in the world. Para denunciar una vez más el injusto bloqueo que durante casi 60 años nos ha impuesto el gobierno de los Estados Unidos. And also to denounce the very unfair blockade that the U.S. government has imposed on us for nearly 60 years. Por lo tanto, para Maduro, para la delegación de Venezuela, para la delegación cubana, Es muy emocionante después de ese duro día estar compartiendo estas emociones con ustedes, amigos de Venezuela y amigos de Cuba en Nueva York. Therefore, for us, for Maduro, for the Cuban and the Venezuelan delegation, it is very important to be here after two days of uh, 
being in New York to be here, sharing so many emotions with you, our friends of us here in New York City. Y milagros como ese solo ocurren en esta ciudad, aquí en la Catedral de Riverside. We are seeing a miracle happening in this city, in this cathedral. Por eso le agradecemos mucho este encuentro. That's why we are so thankful to you for this uh, gathering. Y este es un encuentro de solidaridad. This is a solidarity meeting. Y esta es una catedral de fe y de solidaridad. And this is a cathedral of faith and solidarity. Y por lo tanto aquí no hace falta hablar ni de nombres ni de cargos. Therefore, there's no need to speak about aquí titles todos somos or offices. Hermanas y hermanos. We are all just brothers and sisters here. Aquí todos somos amigas y amigos. We are all just friends here. Por lo tanto, buenas noches, amigas y amigos. Therefore, good evening, dear friends. Buenas noches, hermanas y hermanos. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Nos parece mentira hoy estar aquí, donde más de una vez abrazaron cálidamente ustedes a Fidel y con él a Cuba en nombre de lo mejor del pueblo norteamericano. We are finally here where more than once you embraced Fidel and with him Cuba on behalf of the best of the American people. Por esos momentos y por este en particular lo primero que queremos decirles es gracias. And for those moments and for this moment in particular the first thing I want to say is thank you. Para llegar hasta aquí atravesamos Harlem, el barrio del legendario Hotel Teresa, que se abrió a nuestra primera delegación revolucionaria en la ONU y cobijó encuentros de grandes del siglo XX, donde Fidel recibió a Malcolm X, a Nasser, a Nerú y a Khrushchev. In order for us to get here, we drove through the Harlem neighborhood, the place of the legendary Hotel Teresa which welcomed our first revolutionary delegation to the United Nations and hosted meetings of great men of the 20th century, where Fidel met Malcolm X, Nasser, Nehru, and Khrushchev. La bellísima iglesia Riverside, con su torre de estilo gótico, que hasta hoy solo conocíamos por fotografías y crónicas de aquella intensa noche del año 2000, en la cual los hospitalarios amigos de Harlem dieron una multitudinaria bienvenida de más de 3.000 personas a nuestro líder y sus acompañantes. I only knew the very beautiful Riverside Church with its gothic style spire by photographs and the stories of that intense night of the year 2000, when the hospitable friends from Harlem gave a mass welcome of more than 3,000 people to our leader and his accompanying delegation. Justamente aquí, esa noche recordó Fidel que en su primera visita a la ONU en 1960, él personalmente le había dicho a sus compañeros, me voy a Harlem porque ahí están mis mejores amigos. That night, that night, in this very place, Fidel recalled that in his first visit to the UN in 1960, he had personally told his comrades, I'm going to Harlem because that's where my best friends are. Y hoy aquí queremos recordar con ustedes que precisamente de esa visita en el año 60 se cumplen hoy 58 años que Fidel alzó su voz en la ONU para denunciar la agresión a Cuba por parte de Estados Unidos. And I really wanted to share with you that today is the, we're marking the 58th anniversary of that first visit of Fidel to the UN when he voiced, uh, when he raised his voice in order to denounce the aggressions against Cuba by the United States. A repetir el gesto en el 2000 en esta iglesia, cuenta que se sintió tan a gusto con la multitud reunida para saludarle, que su discurso terminó con un buenos días. Había comenzado a las 10 de la noche y terminó pasada a las 2 de la madrugada. It is said, that when he came again to this church in 2000, he was so at ease with a crowd that had gathered to greet him that he ended his speech by saying, good morning. He had began at 10 in the evening and concluded well after two o'clock in the morning. Claro que yo no sería capaz de repetir tal proeza, ni creo que los visitantes resistan tanto. Pero si a un lugar no podíamos dejar de venir, 
en composición de nuestra delegación que asiste a la Asamblea General de la ONU, es a este doblemente sagrado templo por su misión y por su historia. Of course, I would not be able to repeat that feat, nor do I think that the attending participants will bear with me for that long. But if there is a place that our delegation to the UN General Assembly surely had to go, is this, which is twice as sacred for its mission and for its history. En la Catedral de Riverside puede decirse que nació el programa de formación de jóvenes norteamericanos de los distritos más humildes de esta gran nación en la Escuela Latinoamericana de Ciencias Médicas, nuestra querida Adán, donde hasta el pasado año se habían graduado la cantidad que ustedes expusieron hoy aquí. Al final tenemos que tirarnos una foto. It is fair to say that the program for the training of young Americans from the poorest districts of this great nation at the American School of Medicine, our beloved land, was actually born here. And that school has graduated until last year around the same number of uh, students that you've mentioned. And to the LAM students, we need to take a picture together at the end of the event. Esta iglesia nos recuerda también la entrañable amistad entre Fidel y el reverendo Lucius Walker, quien fue un emisario de la solidaridad en los más años más oscuros de la profunda crisis económica que en nuestro país provocó la exacerbación del bloqueo tras la caída del socialismo europeo. This church reminds us of the profound friendship between Fidel and Reverend Lucius Walker, who was an emissary of solidarity during the darkest years of the deep economic crisis caused by the tightening of the blockade against our country after the collapse of socialism in Europe. Por eso aquí esta noche vamos a hablar de solidaridad. That's why tonight we are going to speak about solidarity. Cuba no es un país grande ni poderoso, ni rico en recursos naturales o financieros. Pero esas limitaciones no nos han impedido practicar la solidaridad sobre la base de compartir no lo que nos sobra, sino lo que tenemos, pero ante todo compartir nuestro esfuerzo y nuestro sacrificio. Se trata de un sacrificio solidario practicado con humildad y que ha tenido un impacto al cabo de varias décadas en la vida de millones de personas de varios continentes. Cuba is not a large or powerful country, not rich in natural or financial resources. But these limitations have not prevented us to practice from practicing solidarity on the basis of sharing what we have, not giving away our leftovers, but actually sharing what we have. But above all, sharing our efforts and our sacrifice. It's a sacrifice in solidarity, which is practiced with humility and which has had an impact over several decades on the lives of millions of people in several continents. La muestra más visible de esa solidaridad es la cooperación que prestan más de 42,000 profesionales cubanos, sobre todo personal médico, en más de 75 países. The most visible expression of that solidarity is the cooperation of more than 42,000 Cuban professionals, particularly medical staff, in over 75 different countries. Ellos representan a los más de un millón de profesionales cubanos que desde el triunfo de la revolución colaboraron en África, Asia, América Latina y el Caribe prestando servicios médicos y servicios de salud, trabajando en obras de ingeniería, con asesoría en agronomía, deportes y otras áreas importantes del desarrollo. They represent more than the one million Cuban professionals that have served in Africa, Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean since the triumph of the revolution, providing health and medical services and working on engineering jobs, providing consulting services in areas such as agronomy, sports, and other important domains for development. También representan el esfuerzo de centros educacionales y universitarios cubanos y del personal de estas instituciones que a lo largo de estas décadas formaron a decenas de miles de técnicos y profesionales de países del tercer mundo y ayudaron a que en muchos de ellos se eliminara el analfabetismo. They also represent the effort of Cuban educational and university centers 
and the effort of the teaching staff from those institutions who during all these decades have trained tens of thousands of technicians and professionals from the third world, helping them to eradicate illiteracy. El empeño más significativo de esa solidaridad internacionalista de la Revolución Cubana fue el apoyo a los movimientos de liberación en África. The greatest endeavor of the internationalist solidarity of the Cuban Revolution was the support to the African liberation movements. Con ese esfuerzo, con ese esfuerzo salvaguardamos la integridad soberana de Angola, alcanzamos la independencia de Namibia y aceptamos un golpe de modelo y desmoralizante a la maquinaria de guerra del régimen de la apartheid en Sudáfrica. The efforts made there contributed to the safeguarding of the sovereign integrity of Angola, achieving the independence of Namibia, and dealing a demolishing and demoralizing blow to the war machine of the apartheid regime in South Africa. Oh. Por eso cuando Cuba viene a la Asamblea General de las Naciones Unidas y promueve la cooperación y la solidaridad frente a la amenaza, la competencia, el racismo y el egoísmo, lo hace con la autoridad de un pueblo que demostró que tales propósitos son posibles y que convirtió las declaraciones en acciones concretas. This is why... When Cuba comes to the United Nations General Assembly and promotes cooperation and solidarity, as opposed to threats, competition, racism, and selfishness, Cuba does so with the authority of a people that has shown that it is possible to achieve those goals and a country that has turned words into concrete actions. Especialmente este año, donde se conmemora el centenario del nacimiento de Nelson Mandela, a cuya memoria se ha dedicado una cumbre por la paz, Cuba no puede dejar de expresar el sentimiento que nos embarga cuando los nombres de grandes líderes de la lucha por la justicia social y la igualdad entre todos los hombres se levantan como bandera por representantes de naciones enriquecidas a costa del saqueo a los pueblos oprimidos y vilipendiados del tercer mundo, al que aquellos líderes consagraron sus vidas. Precisely this year, which marks the centennial birth of Nelson Mandela, whose memory has been honored in a peace summit, Cuba cannot but express the feeling that it felt when the names of outstanding leaders of the struggle for social justice and equality among all men are commended by the representatives of nations which have been enriched at the expense of the plundering of the oppressed and humiliated peoples of the third world to whom all those leaders actually devoted their lives. Quienes mantienen en vilo la paz fortaleciendo sus arsenales con armamentos cada vez más sofisticados y amenazadores. Quienes fomentan conflictos y amenazan con invasiones. Quienes hace apenas una década consideraban a, Made a Mandela terrorista y entregaron armas nucleares al régimen racista de entonces, deberían pedir perdón a los pueblos que sufren el costo de las guerras cuando podrían disfrutar los beneficios del desarme. Those keeping peace in suspense, expanding their arsenals with increasingly more sophisticated and threatening weapons, promoting conflicts and threatening with invasions, those who barely a decade ago considered Mandela to be a terrorist and provided nuclear weapons to the racist regime of the time, should ask for forgiveness to the peoples who suffered the cost of wars when they could instead enjoy the benefits of disarmament. Hace 58 años hoy, en su memorable primer discurso en la ONU, Fidel Albertía, que con la quinta parte de lo que el mundo se gasta en armamentos, se podía promover un desarrollo de todos los países subdesarrollados con una tasa de crecimiento del 10% anual. 58 years ago today, in his memorable, memorable first address in the UN, Fidel warned that, and I quote, 
with one-fifth of what the world spends and squanders on armament. We could, promote, we could promote the development of the underdeveloped countries with a rate of growth of 10% per annum. No hace falta calcular qué parte de la inversión en armamento bastaría hoy para financiar el desarrollo de los países más atrasados económicamente. Pero por los descomunales precios que todo tiene en nuestra época, especialmente las armas, me atrevo a repetir que con un quinto de ese gasto, muchos pobres dejarían de serlo. There is no need to calculate which portion of the investment in armament would suffice to finance the development of the most economically backward countries. On the basis of the extremely high prices of everything today, especially armament, I would dare say that with a fifth of that expenditure, a lot of people would be lifted out of poverty. Defendiendo que un mundo de paz y cooperación es indispensable para el desarrollo, la política exterior de la Revolución Cubana mantiene invariable su posición a favor del desarme total y de la solidaridad internacional. On the basis that a world of peace and cooperation is indispensable for development, the foreign policy of the Cuban Revolution maintains its consistent position in favor of total disarmament and international solidarity. Ese es nuestro compromiso con los que han padecido y aún padecen la injusticia y la exclusión, con los que han sufrido y aún sufren como consecuencia del colonialismo, el neocolonialismo, el imperialismo y el racismo. Es una política exterior que hace causa común con los desposeídos, los marginados y los explotados. This is the commitment with those who have suffered and still continue to suffer injustice and exclusion. Those who have suffered and still continue to suffer as a result of colonialism, neoliberalism, imperialism and racism. It is a foreign policy that makes common cause with the half-nuts, the marginalized and the exploited. Fidel nos enseñó Fidel nos enseñó que cooperar con otros pueblos explotados y pobres fue siempre para los revolucionarios cubanos un principio político y un deber con la humanidad. Our undefeated commander in chief Fidel Castro taught us and I quote to cooperate with other poor and exploited peoples has always been a political principle and a duty towards humanity." Unquote. Cuba también le debe mucho a la solidaridad internacional y a la solidaridad de miles de amigos y de activistas aquí en los Estados Unidos. Cuba is actually very much indebted to international solidarity and to the solidarity of thousands of friends and activists here in the United States. Entre los que se encuentran también muchos cubanos aquí residentes. Including many Cubans who live here. La demostración más reciente fue el movimiento masivo internacional a favor de la liberación de los cinco luchadores antiterroristas cubanos que fueron injustamente encarcelados y antes por el regreso del niño Elian González a su hogar en Cuba. The most recent demonstration of that was the mass international movement in favor of the release of the five anti-terrorist fighters unjustly imprisoned here in the United States, and before that, the struggle for the return of the boy Elian Gonzalez to his home in Cuba. Como todos conocen, nuestra relación bilateral con los Estados Unidos sigue caracterizada ante todo por el bloqueo económico que constituye un obstáculo fundamental al desarrollo y al bienestar de los cubanos que provoca privaciones en nuestras familias. As you are aware, our bilateral relations with the United States continues to be characterized, above all, by the economic blockade, which is a major obstacle to the development and well-being of Cubans and brings hardships to the Cuban families. Los vínculos entre ambos países continúan influidos por las pretensiones de grupos minoritarios pero políticamente poderosos dentro de este país que promueven la tensión y la hostilidad. The ties between both countries 
continue to be influenced by the hopes of minority groups, but politically very powerful, which promote, which promote tensions and hostility. Son grupos que aspiran a que Cuba regrese al pasado. These groups hope to bring back Cuba to the past. Para ello utilizan el engaño y la difamación. Cuentan con poderosos recursos financieros y el respaldo manipulador de influyentes medios de prensa. Do Han logrado promover nuevas medidas políticas dirigidas a estrangular la economía cubana. Son medidas que entorpecen aún más los intercambios bilaterales entre nuestros pueblos y que dificultan las relaciones de la nación y la emigración. To this end, they use lies and defamation. They have huge financial resources available to them and the, mani and the manipulating support of the influential media. They have been able to promote new political measures aimed at suffocating the Cuban economy. These are measures that further obstruct bilateral exchanges between our peoples and hinder the relationship of the nation with the immigration. Pero siempre tropezarán con la unidad patriótica de los cubanos y con el ideario de independencia y rebeldía en que se forjó nuestra nación. Tropezarán también con el rechazo y el activismo de los amigos de Cuba en muchas partes del mundo, incluidas nuestras hermanos y hermanos aquí en Estados Unidos. But they will clash with the patriotic unity of Cubans and the ideals of independence and rebelliousness in which our nation was forged. They will also clash with the rejection and activism of Cuba friends in many parts of the world, including our brothers and sisters here in the United States. Lo que en estos momentos moviliza la nación cubana y la tarea que concentra la atención de nuestro pueblo es el proceso de discusión masiva y popular del proyecto de constitución que nos proponemos adoptar a inicios del próximo año como expresión del país que deseamos, como compromiso de continuar edificando el socialismo con lealtad a los ideales que han acompañado la lucha por la independencia y la justicia social en nuestro país a lo largo de su historia. What is currently mobilizing the Cuban nation and the task at hand drawing the people's attention is the process of mass and popular discussions on the draft constitution that we intend to adopt early next year. This is an expression of the country that we want as a commitment to continue building socialism, faithful to the ideals that have accompanied the struggle for independence and social struggle in our country throughout history. Dentro de pocos días, el próximo 10 de octubre se cumplirán 150 años de nuestro grito de independencia cuando un habitud. Very soon, on the upcoming October the 10th, will mark the 150th anniversary of our cry for independence. When a group of Cuban patriots, led by Carlos Manuel de Céspedes, rose in arms for the independence of the country and the abolition of slavery. En honor a esa fecha, en recordación de los mártires y héroes de nuestra patria, en gratitud hacia los ciudadanos de otros países que en gesto de solidaridad sacrificaron sus vidas en la lucha por la independencia de Cuba, entre los que se incluyeron prominentes luchadores estadounidenses y en reconocimiento fraterno al esfuerzo extraordinario de los incansables amigos que durante todos estos años han luchado en contra del bloqueo económico y en demanda de una política de respeto hacia Cuba, ratifico el compromiso solidario e inquebrantable de la revolución cubana con la causa de la justicia y del derecho de los pueblos a soñar y alcanzar un mundo mejor que es posible. To honor, to honor that date in memory of the heroes and founding fathers of our homeland, in gratitude to the people from other countries who in a gesture of solidarity sacrificed their lives in Cuba's struggles for independence, including prominent American fighters, and also in a fraternal recognition of the extraordinary effort of the tireless friends who have fought against the economic blockade for all these years, as well as demanding a respectful policy towards Cuba, 
I come here to ratify the solidarity and the unwavering commitment of the Cuban Revolution to the cause of justice and the rights of peoples to dream about and achieve a better world which is indeed possible. Hermanas y hermanos, este es nuestro saludo. Brothers and sisters, this is our greeting to you. Porque esto es lo que hacen los mejores amigos cuando se encuentran después de mucho tiempo. Because this is what best friends do when they meet after a very long time. O cuando, como es nuestro caso, traen la entrañable memoria de sus padres y de los amigos de sus padres. Or when it is like in our case, they bring back the dear memories of their fathers and their father's friends. Hoy con ustedes sentimos que aquí están presentes Fidel y Chávez. Today, today we say here to you that Fidel and Chávez are present here. Viva la Revolución Bolivariana de Venezuela. Long live the Bolivarian Revolution of Venezuela. Viva la Revolución Cubana. Long live the Cuban Revolution. Viva la amistad entre nuestros pueblos. Long live the friendship between our peoples. Hasta la victoria siempre. Ever onward to victory. Thank you very much. Cuba sí. Cuba sí. Cuba sí. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Gracias, compañeras y compañeros. Vamos a continuar con otro regalo a nuestro presidente y compañero Miguel Díaz Canal Bermúdez. Los compañeros de la Nación Sur Universal tienen mucho talento y uno de sus pintores, artistas, activistas ha hecho la pintura que ustedes ven aquí. Ven a Fidel, a Raúl y a Miguel. The Universal Zulu Nation has very artists and activists and fighters within it. And one of those, an artist and activist, has created the gift that you see here for our president, Miguel Canen Bermudez. He's going to come up to present that gift. Sloan, Brother Sloan, I just want to say, Fidel, Raúl y Miguel, Cuba ayer, Cuba hoy y Cuba siempre. Thank you, Sloan. We are honored to have today with us President Díaz Canel and our friend and compañero Nicolás Maduro de la República Bolivariana de Venezuela. Cuba, Venezuela. Can we show, once again, our love for President Diaz-Canal? 
and Nicolás Maduro, on behalf of Gail and myself and the welcoming committee and all the volunteers and the media and outreach folks, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for joining us. Y que viva Cuba, revolucionaria. Gracias.